By popular request, I'm doing a review on this 2014 Ram 2500 Cummins Turbo Diesel. There are many just like it, but this one's mine. And when I say that, I mean it. I've outfitted it to do what I do. It serves my purpose as well. It may not serve yours. The point of this video is to show the good, the bad, and the ugly about this vehicle. This vehicle from about 2013 till 2016, I think, is pretty much still the same. When I bought it, I, it was my intention to buy an older vehicle. I was going to buy a 2011 or 2012, and I got this one because I got it about $10,000 off a of sticker price. The guy talked me into it. He made his end of the month bonus, and I tell you what, it's a good idea to buy something like this the last day of the month at a hopping dealership. I made a Ben Franklin list like this, and on the back of it, I've done some good add-ons, bad add-ons, uh, things I do want, and some problems that I've had with the truck. And I'm going to go over these. I'm going to try to keep this somewhat short, uh, but I do want to give the information uh, that I would want to have if I were to buy the truck. So let's begin. Uh, the things that I really like about this truck is the factory trailer brake. I like the list of trailer options that are already programmable and set up for electronic trailer brake. Um, I like the access to where you can change and adjust it. I also like the access and where it's located just to the right of the steering column by your right knee. Adjusting it's a breeze, it's really accurate and it works really, really well. I love the factory backup camera. Now mine didn't come with the trailer brake at all and it didn't come with the factory backup camera. I added those later. I saved about ten dollars to $20,000 by not buying the Laramie edition, but then I also saved a bunch of money buying it last day of the month and that's why I bought a brand new truck as opposed to a used one. My advice is you're better off to buy a used one most of the time. Another thing I really like is the floor storage. These little floor storage compartments are a great place to be able to hold your tie downs and things like that. If you have little kids and they're in a car seat, you'll find that it's a real pain in the neck to get them out of that to get to the bottom underneath seat storage. So those floor compartments are great for that. I really like the Mustang look. The headlights, the hood louvers, it just looks like a mean, nice, aggressive truck. I've always really liked this body style. This truck is kind of an idiot savant in that some things it does really, really well, and because of those things, it has, it has offsets of other things that are not as great. Uh, one of the things is it has a fantastic towing capacity. The towing capacity is just awesome. That's one of the reasons I bought the truck but it causes the ride to be a little bit harsh on roads like this. Another thing along those lines is the tailgate. When you open and close this tailgate, it feels really light and really nice, but it's a pain in the neck to take it off. So when you go to open the tailgate, it's not very heavy because it's got the torsion bar. I really like that, that's nice. Uh, what I've done with mine is I've got this tonneau cover that you can flip over and secure down and it's great. I've also done a lighting system, so you can see there's some dirt that gets in here. I put in a little bulb seal and that cut the dirt down dramatically, like a, a significant amount, but you still get a lot of dirt. Um, you can see the light turning on and off, so you can see great. I've got a bed slide that I put in. That way I've got access to my first responder jack, chains, straps, cones, uh, chairs. You never know how long you're gonna be on a roadblock sometimes. Sometimes I do mobile repair where I'll replace a window regulator. It's nice to have a place to sit when you do that. Um, you fit the fire extinguisher underneath the bed slide. It's pretty accessible. It's easy to close the tailgate. With the tonneau cover, it's a good idea to close the tailgate first because it's got this little rubber lip that goes over the top. So mine, I just go whack, whack, and it stays in. I had to put screws in mine to get it to hold. That's kind of a pain in the neck. I love my Yeti. It's not for everybody, but it really suits my purpose as well. And I really like the column shifter. I know that some of these trucks come with a dial. I don't like that. I like being able to just jump in blindfolded and be able to hit the gear that I'm looking for. The nice thing about this is it's got the park through drive, and then you're downshifting your lower gears you can select from a push button on the column. I really like that too. I really like the design of the dashboard. I think they did a really great job. You can put your smartphone and use your GPS on your smartphone and just set it up there in that pocket or you can put sunglasses there. I think it's a really handy nice thing. You also have a big hollow area where you can put a GPS sitting on the dash. Say you live in California they won't let you put it on the windshield. You can stick it on the dash. I think that's great too. I also really like the instrument cluster. You know a lot of people like it or don't like it. 
But the thing that I really like about the instrument cluster is you actually have some frickin' numbers. You want to know how many degrees Fahrenheit your thing is or change it to Celsius, you can do that. You want to know how many volts your alternator's putting out, it gives you a number, a frickin' number. You want to know your transmission temperature, great, here it is. You want your boost numbers, they're there. I love that. Some of the things I really dislike about this truck or some things that bother me about it are often just the programming of it. There's all kinds of things with the computer side of this that are just a pain in the neck. If you want to activate your backup camera, if you want to activate uh, your idle up feature with your cruise control buttons, which is a great nice feature, especially if you have like an onboard alternator, you don't want to have a lot of high idle numbers. And it tracks your idle numbers, you can look at that. Everything goes through the computer, but if you hit the washer fluid, it doesn't squirt first and then kick on the wipers. It does the wipers immediately on a dry windshield. So if you got a dirty, dusty, nasty windshield, and you hit those squirters, it's going to go windshield wipers first and then it'll squirt because they come on essentially at the exact same time. Anybody who's ever washed any dishes or anything or washed a car knows you want to spray and then wipe. Maybe they think that that's dangerous or something. But the way that it is is a pain in the neck because it's hard on your wipers. It makes them not last as long, and it's less effective. It doesn't help you. I mean, if you if you lose visibility from squirting on the windshield for a half a second, it's worth it in my opinion. I'd read, I'd rather have it that way. Uh, another thing, the emissions are great because it's good for clean air. It makes the truck quieter. Having a quiet truck is pretty nice. It's cool to have a loud truck some of the time, but sometimes it's nice to have a quiet truck because you don't scare everything off. But those emissions are really a pain in the butt. Your 67 and a half thousand mile service, you got this great big filter underneath the valve cover uh, that you have to replace and then you have to pull off your EGR valve and your EGR cooler and clean them out. That's a bit of a pain in the neck. It's not the end of the world. I mean it's Cummins. They're not too hard to service. They're pretty good. Another thing is just the paint chips. I've got a bunch of little paint chips that keep showing up. I don't like that. I think that the paint could be less brittle or thicker or something. They did not dial in the paint on these things. Another thing is the recalls. I hate turning my vehicle over to somebody else. The same thing with the warranty. I'd rather pay less for the truck and not have a warranty. I trust Cummins as a company. I think Fiat's a good solid company. Uh, the Daimler side kind of concerns me a little bit. but. There's some good technology from them in terms of safety too. The factory recalls that I have to take it into the dealership for. And they're usually just stupid things like programming, but I just don't like them. Uh, another thing I don't care for are the factory tires. These are good, strong tires. Uh, they're Firestone Transforce HCs or something like that. They're 10 ply tires. They take a beating, they wear pretty well. Uh, but the biggest thing for me with these is that you have to have 80 PSI in the back tires in order to not have the light come on for your TPMS. That's tire pressure monitoring system for anybody that doesn't know. But basically it makes it go bald in the middle. I've only got 15,000 miles and my tires are about wore out because I've been uh, having them aired up. And, I, and the thing is, is to get the towing capacity out of this, you have to have all that pressure in the tires. But if the light's on all the time, it's not going to do you a dang bit of good. The nice side, and one thing I do like, is that in your info, you can see exactly what your tire pressure is. One of the things I'd really like to do is tires. These tires, especially the back tires, when they were getting bald from being 80 PSI when I wasn't towing anything, it was just a big, huge mess. You know, I was sliding all over the place, and I was on an aircraft wreck in the snow. I got stuck, I had to have a rancher pull me out twice. And while it's really nice that you build friendships that way, it's also a huge pain in the neck and a real stress to not be able to be sufficient on your own. When you buy a Tradesman Edition like this started out as, the seats are crap. The seats just suck. They're too high or they're too low or whatever they are, they're just as it is. You can't adjust them up and down hardly at all. They need more adjustment in them. The cloth seats, they're gray, light gray. That's the stupidest color in the world for a tradesman work truck. The seats should be black or they should be something dark charcoal or something that doesn't show dirt so much. As, as the light gray color that they are, they're going to look like crap. That's why I put the seat covers on them. That's why I got the black seat covers. You can imagine, you know, like if you carry a weapon or if you have a radio on your side. I mean, look what it's done to the seat covers here. It's just made a mess of them, plus getting in and out. So I think black seats... Black seats would be a lot better than gray, but 
need to go leather at some point. Uh, the downside to the clean emissions and all that is just the DEF fluid. It's just one more thing you have to do. But the nice thing about DEF is you get the fuel economy numbers. You get 14 and a half miles per gallon around town and out on the highway you get about 18, 17 to 20 just depending if it's canyons or not. One of the things that drove me nuts is while I went camping I wanted to plug my phone in overnight and have my phone charge up on the truck. Um, I was up on a hunt and there's no power outlet that stays on. They all turn off with the key. So if you want to charge something in the truck overnight or for something like your cell phone, forget it. You're going to have to wire your own. These trucks ride really nice with the coil spring suspension, but once I did the leveling kit, because I plan on doing some bigger tires and it just looks better with the leveling kit, I couldn't haul a trailer anymore without putting the airbags on. It just fishtailed all over the place. It was a huge dangerous mess. Um, you have to really balance your trailer perfectly. You can't have too much tongue weight or else it just pops a wheelie. It's just, it, it was dangerous. Um, but once you put the airbags on, that nice soft ride from those coil springs is gone. Uh, leaf springs, I think, are a better way to go if you're really going to tow. I mean, this thing's got a ridiculous towing capacity. That's what it's built for, so why wouldn't you just do that? That's a lot of ravens. So one of the things that I miss most about my old Cummins is my old Cummins had everything. It was, it was chipped. I had the edge uh, juice with attitude on it. I had it straight piped pretty much. And it just did awesome on fuel. This thing doesn't do near as well on fuel, but it's a bigger truck. I really like having four doors, but you know, it's gonna weigh more if you're gonna have four doors. Another nice thing about this truck is that it seats six people. But as part of that, you don't have as many of the creature features or options, you know, in terms of a center console. The cruise control on this is fantastic. I don't like not being able to adjust the TPMS sensors. The tire pressure monitoring system on this thing's a nut. It's just it, the crappy thing about it is they want you to have 80 psi in the back tires. It makes the tires go bald in the center if you're not loaded up. And so if you have your tires set to where it's right for when you're not loaded, you've got the stupid light on all the time, which is a hazard because you never know. I mean, they're mandated to have it from 2008 and newer because it's important to not be low and have a blowout on the freeway. Well, now you never have that system. I mean, what the hell? You paid a bunch of money to have it, but it's not doing you any good. Um, it's either making your tires go bald in the back or it's causing you to not have it because it's a false alarm all the time if you got 65 in the back or 40 or 50, whatever. I don't really like the Mercedes key. One of the things that bugs me is that these buttons, the way they stick out, I'm always hitting the lock unlock when I don't mean to. Um, I'll throw my keys in my pocket, I'll lock up the truck and I'll go to take off on a flight somewhere and I'll bump the unlock. So I just unlock my truck and I'm flying away and you know I'm trying to navigate and do my thing. Uh, another thing is that when this is in your pocket, that stupid panic button is always, you know, like, oh yay, that's great, we really love that, isn't that fantastic, I could, I could listen to that all night. But this, when you fold your keys up in your pocket, the other keys double back on that and they tend to false uh, engage it. I don't like that. The only thing that I've had fail per se, or that I would have had to take back to the dealership is that this window switch, aside from being just really rattly and just not very well fitted, it actually wasn't plugged in from the factory. And be really careful with these, are these metal clips right here will break off. But it was in place, it was there, but it wasn't pushed in all the way to click, and so that caused it to fail. But you can see any dirt or anything that gets in there just makes a mess. This is actually a Mercedes or a Daimler design. On the same note with the Mercedes window switch is the key. The key is actually a Mercedes design. I'm always afraid I'm going to hit it with my knee and bust it off. You can see I've added some rubberized tape to this just to help make it so that the keys on the rest of the key ring don't chew up the dash there. Another thing that I really like is the Fiat wiring. If you have a short or some kind of uh, burn, those white wires show it really well and really quick. Um, but the downside to that is that it's harder to trace the wires real quickly unless you use a tone generator. Fortunately, I have one. These mirrors, I love everything about them. I love the turn signals in them. I love the blind spot a feature. And I really, really like that they flip out for towing. The blind spot mirror is nice to see everything to the side of you. And this other mirror is great to see whatever's on the side of you. The camera really doesn't do this justice, but the clarity on this backup display is fantastic. These front door pockets are pretty handy. You can actually use these as a cup holder. I use mine for Kleenex. 
because I have three cup holders here and then I've got another three and that's if you don't have a person in the front but I also have three cup holders here this one pretty much just has a safety vest and I just use the ones in here when you figure you got six passengers that can fit in this with this up yeah I mean that's six cup holders right there plus the door ones makes eight plus you've got two more in the back here which makes about ten I don't know what you're doing with ten cups unless you're getting shakes and drinks but women love cup holders so that's one selling point of this truck you've got a power outlet on this side and you've got a USB on this side you got another power outlet here and you've got an auxiliary plug and you also have a USB drive there that plays to the stereo so you can just do a little thumb drive like that I really like the factory exhaust brake the factory exhaust brake is fantastic it's a lot of fun it works with the cruise control there's two settings for it full and then one that just kind of maintains your speed I absolutely love the stereo in this thing it's not like this giant huge thing that dominates your whole truck but the sound quality on it, it's an upgraded Uconnect 5 inch and the picture quality on the backup camera is fantastic the picture quality on showing a little picture of the song like from your iTunes I love that you plug in your iPod it works with the iPod it works with the USB drive uh, the sound quality is awesome it's just fantastic I don't have to put an amp or speaker box or anything in it really I think it's just plenty you can go deaf just fine with this another thing I really like is the get in handles it's got handles for both the passengers, uh, the back seat people, and the driver. And on the A-pillar, instead of having it be really fat or thick or stick out to the back, it's aimed right at your face, so you're looking with the handle in line with the A-pillar. It doesn't block much of your view. I love that when you hit the cruise control set button, you can immediately get off the gas and it holds your speed right where you're at. I like that the fuel door is really small. I do not like that they don't have a cap. This is the cap that they're supposed to take off on the pre-delivery inspection. Um, but you've got your DEF right here and you've got your diesel here. I just kept this in here because if they need this for shipping, why in the Sam heavens would I not want to keep it in there the rest of the time? Another thing, uh, it's kind of a software thing like the wipers, is that if you want to use LED bulbs on this, your truck doesn't know it. It always tells you that your lights are out. You jump in the truck, you're getting ready to leave somewhere. Say you're going to do your trip odometer and you know log your miles for towing or business or whatever you're going to do. Well, surprise, you can't get into your thing unless you hit cancel on all the warnings or your messages letting you know that all of your turn signals are out. I do the LED turn signals because it's a diesel. You don't want to leave it idling on a roadblock or a fire, landslide, whatever, a, a fatality. Or just if you're working on the side of the road or loading up a car, I like to turn it off and then have the lower power consuming LEDs running. You save a bunch of money doing the Tradesman instead of doing the Laramie, uh, but there's all these quirky little things like that, like it thinks your signals are out all the time. One of my most hated, hated, hated parts about owning this diesel truck is that when you pull out onto the highway, it takes forever to get going. That drives me crazy. Like if you it's to protect the engine it's to protect the transmission i know i know i know but i never get used to it just like you expect you know 99 percent of the time you drive a vehicle it performs great you pull out in traffic you don't feel like you're gonna die it's wonderful but that one percent when you first pull, pull out on the highway if you're cold if you're not warmed up because i live on a highway because i'm in the middle of nowhere uh, but when i pull out it just sucks i've got you know camper here dump truck there and a big old garbage truck behind me like right on my butt how do you love that one thing that's a little annoying is that the wind noise is pretty severe like I don't know what it is if it's a tow mirrors if it's a tow mirrors I can forgive that but it sounds like there's noise along the top of the windshield like where that gap is that's what I'm guessing it is but you just get a lot of wind noise especially if there's a crosswind one thing I love about the truck is that when it comes time to pass and go, assuming the vehicle's warmed up, it will pass and go like awesome. From the factory, it's a lot better to drive than my truck was. Uh, my other truck was good once it was chipped, but from the factory it wasn't very drivable. This is a lot more drivable. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click like and subscribe. Bonus footage at the end. I got a package from Aaron C. in Smithfield, Utah. Postman opened it for me a little bit. Says, hi Brian, I've been watching your videos since the beginning, or pretty close to. 
I really appreciated your willingness to help others. I have learned a lot from all that you've been able to help others from you. As a fellow Utahan, Cache Valley area, it's nice to know that Utah is being represented well on YouTube. After watching Sunday's video, 71116, I have some plates I've acquired when I was in West Virginia for the two years of my young adult life. It sounds like quite the mission. I know that these are older and maybe worth more. I'll have plenty to share. I know they will go to a good place. Thanks again. Regards, Aaron. P.S. If you're ever up in Cache Valley area and looking for some good trails, let me know. I'll have to leave this in the same place and black that out. P.S.S. You may share the letter, but would appreciate not showing my number as you so carefully do in your videos. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks, Aaron. That's fantastic. Appreciate that, buddy. Holy crap. Michigan, too. Missions. These have both been like the... The hard to get plates for me and dude who does that he goes at New Mexico Michigan and West Virginia three plates in one thanks Aaron appreciate that a lot you know what I failed to mention is that this is a 76 plate for Michigan that's uh, 1976 that's 200 year anniversary from 1776 when the Declaration of Independence was signed this one's from Dwayne Riger and he's from Devil's Lake North Dakota Hello Brian, enjoy your no BS vi- what do you mean no BS? I always throw in some BS. Especially those bonus content, find those flying videos just too cool. Hope you can use the North Dakota pair. Thanks from the Great White North, Dewey. Awesome. Thanks Dewey. I'll take a look at this. These are pretty clean. You notice that they've got a lot of clear coat. They might have been painted on something with clear coat. Can you see the run marks where this was the high point? Interesting. Peace Garden State. That's awesome. Wow, these are heavily clear coated. I say somebody clear coated these at some point. Pretty sure. Awesome. So New Jersey is the Garden State and North Dakota is the Peace Garden State. And apparently they just had a centennial in 1989. This was registered clear out to 93. Awesome. Thanks, Dewey. This one comes from Wayne's Work Vlog and that's from Colorado Springs, Colorado. They know everything in Colorado Springs. Got a Colorado plate. Super clean looking. Got a letter. Ooh, a collector video, collector vehicle plate from Colorado. An Oklahoma plate. This is the updated one. And then uh, Alabama plate. Awesome. Thanks, Wayne. So for Wayne's Work Vlog, it says, Brian Wayne from YouTube.com, Wayne's Work Vlog love the channel you always have such a positive attitude and always reply to comments i learned quite a bit from your channel keep up the good work saw you still needed a couple of states and threw in some colorado because i have a stack of them would appreciate a shout out because my channel could definitely use it thanks again for always replying means a lot thanks wayne so you guys know what to do go show wayne's work vlog some love just uh, type that in on the search bar for youtube and uh, get in there so awesome. Thanks, Wayne. I really appreciate your, uh, <laughs> he went for it. Him and Aaron. Man, Aaron and Wayne really went for it on this one. Pretty impressive. <clears throat> this one comes from Jerry Polk. Jerry's from Jackson, Georgia. <laughs> Look at the louvers on that hood. Got all kinds of venting. Good morning, Brian. I know you already have a Georgia plate, but I thought I would send you one of those antique hobby car plates. This was on my old street strip, 78 Malibu. I added a shot of the car at the strip. I know you're also into bikes. I'm sending you a motorcycle plate. I'm an Air Force Vietnam vet and have veteran tags on my vehicles. And Georgia started making them for bikes last year, so I have one on my Yamaha Super T I don't even know that. That's cool. I should look that up. Yamaha Super Tenier. I enjoy your videos and hope you'll continue making them. I enjoy the bonus footage at the end. <laughs> I, I enjoy making the bonus footage at the end. I'm glad you enjoy it too. Thanks for the videos, Jerry Polk. Thanks, Jerry. Let's check these out. It says Butts at the bottom. That's great. It must be Butts County. Oh, yeah, Sands of Butts. And there's a Georgia plate. That's awesome. Thanks for the motorcycle tag too. That's cool. I have a few of these uh, I've collected, but... I don't have a whole lot of them. They're a lot more rare, it seems. So awesome. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks to everybody who sent in some plates. Let's go see the map. We got a whole stripe of Wayne's work vlog going on here. We've got Aaron all over the place. Thanks for doing that. We're really we're just about got bingo blackout going on up in here. 
Look at this, we got 31 present states and only 19 missing. The missing states are Florida, Oregon, Wyoming, Arkansas, Kentucky, New Hampshire, Maine, Delaware, Rhode Island, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Connecticut, Vermont, South Dakota, Kansas, Iowa, Louisiana, Mississippi. And that list is just getting shorter all the time. I went to pull the plates out of the post office box today and about couldn't pull them out. The thing was just stuffed. <laughs> Uh, stuffed with love. I really appreciate you guys pitching in on stuff like this. Like I say, it just makes my day. It's so fun to hear from everybody. Um, just thank you. Really appreciate it. Run. That's pretty good. 